screen over there. You know, I think you look pretty huh? good. We're Ladies and gentlemen, right? October 19th, 2023. It's 4 p.m. We're on time today in the brand new studio. If there's any issues with the audio, we'll figure it out another time. Anyway, <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Eagle Rider Motorcycle Rentals and Tours. Don't forget to check out TulaneLife.com. Under the Eagle Rider tab, we can learn how to book a trip, save some money, get some travels in at the same time. Boys, what do we got going on today? We have a lot going on. Just as usual, we're busy. Our store is pretty much done. We got a great guest today. Um, we're going to have a grand opening, an open house. When is that? November 4th, uh, 12 to 4, 9027 Canoga Avenue, Unit I, Canoga Park, California, 91304. Free be tacos. there or be square. Come on now. Tacos, drinks, food, giveaways, tons of giveaways from, from some great sponsors. Our good friend Aaron Baker is going to be there. You all saw the ride we did up the coast. He's going to bring his, his uh, trike and his books. I think he's going to bring some books. Yeah, he's got a great book, Rebellious Recovery. The guy's the man, our hero, Aaron Baker. I love him. I love him, and we love his family. So what a great drop yesterday, huh? Oh. The last candidate. Oh, I love it. I mean, I, I think maybe we'll do a year in review. I think that was probably one of my most favorite rides of all time. One of them. It was a great Top ride. Top five for sure. Beautiful scenery, great weather, nice rain. Yeah. We <laughs> came out of Washington, uh, out of Canada, Kamloops down into Washington, which was spectacular riding, uh, and then worked our way 180 miles into Seattle. I really missed that. So go back. Check out our Wednesday drop. You'll be stoked. Watch our Sturgis stuff, our Canada stuff. More great stuff coming. We got some great stuff to finish off the rest of the year. We do. We've got some project work that we're going to do. We've this grand opening, those also before we get there. Uh, I think Thrashen's going to have a booth there. We're going to have some sponsors there. We're going to do a bunch of giveaways. Can't wait to do that. We're going to donate some money to some great causes. So come on. And bring to, it. Huh? while we're speaking of giveaways, we should kind of clue people in one by one. Yes. Some of the giveaways include a fuel and cam chest kit. $1,700 value. Uh, legend suspension. Helmets. Another big one. Uh, uh, hell helmets. Good shit. Custom Dynamics uh, is going to do a light uh, headlamp and some different. We're going to probably have $10,000 worth of stuff. A thrashing supply giveaway box. Whoa. But stuff. look, we have this incredible guest, Cody, and I just want to read something because I've never. Are you doing the intro today? No, but I'm just okay. going to read this thing because I've I've never. This is one of the best things I've read about a person. Okay, wait. Before you read that, when you get a moment, Josh, just yeah. stand up and pull your chair away so the awning doesn't come down and hit you in the back of the head at some well, point. Well, that's you don't important. want me pulling that you thing don't down. Need that. <laughs> your wheels on it. But anyway. So Cody Renee Cameron is a is a cool cocktail comprised of raw acting talent, badass stunt work sprinkled with sexy, then shaken and poured into a chilled glass. Whoa. I mean, that's I like a it. great description. I'm not going to lie. I wrote that myself. <laughs> really? I mean, I, yeah. I read that and I'm just like, I, I don't think I've ever read an <laughs> intro like that. That was so cool. I like Can it. Can you tell I used to be a bartender? Yeah. Really? Yeah. How do you I like our bar? Oh, I love it. It's All right. gorgeous. <laughs> well, we, we really appreciate you driving in to, to do the live here and not do it over StreamYard. So it's good to have you in person. You got a little friend there. Who's that? <gasps> yeah, we've got Chopper here. He's got his little vest on with his little patch and his little top rocker that says his name. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Chopper's cool. He reminds me of our friend Chico. I know. <laughs> so he's a good boy. Considering you're the one who wrote that, I'm normally the one who does the the intros, but I'll let you do it this do it yourself this time. Huh, and just what? introduce well, wait, people. I thought, you did, I thought, I you, thought did you did it. I thought you did it too. But so let's okay. let let's let him. He's good no, at this. Stuff. No, yeah. yeah. No, but I, I mean, let's no, repeat your. Paragraph. Let's hear. Okay, I forgot it. Come on, I'm blanking. I'm on the spot now. This week we've got Cody Cameron in the house. She's an actress, stunt woman, writer. Dog lover, green tea matcha lover, all that good stuff. And she just recently did a cross country road trip on Route 66 to raise money for Wagmore Pets Dog Rescue. Wagmore Pets Dog Rescue. And we've got her in the house. And she's got, she's been on Breaking Bad, Mayans MC, a whole lot more. I'll let her take it from here. Well, well let, let me ask you a question. The yes. link. Yeah, go. That was so. Well, all the links are in the uh, video about, description. There you go. So if you want to donate to Wagmore Pets Dog Rescue, you can. 
and we'll talk a little bit about it. So what what is Wagmore Pets? So Chopper came from there. He was rescued from a hoarding house in Bakersfield with a hundred other dogs. Wow. Uh, Wagmore Pets goes in and they get the phone call and they're like, we're there. So they come in, take all the dogs. Wow. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good thing. So to raise money, with is it like a hundred dollars a dog to get them out of there? Or is it with all the, or do you know, I, I mean, is there... Yeah, so they uh, they have a place in Studio City, okay. so they have to pay rent there, you know, dog food, shots, everything. And yeah, they do all sorts of things. So they go to Bakersfield and Rescue Dogs. They do a, a dog exchange, which is where there's like tiny dogs in the Midwest that no one wants. And we have big dogs here. And so they actually drive across country and trade the dogs okay. out so they have a better chance of getting adopted. Um, so it's like a dating game, maybe, <laughs> <laughs> for dogs. <laughs> They should expand their business. Right. Yeah. yeah. Hey, that's good. Um, you know, uh, uh, puppy mills that get shut down, they'll come in and they'll, a lot of those dogs need, you know, surgeries and stuff. So they'll do that. So actually one of the things that, uh, some of the money that we raised went to go help a dog whose jaw had been broken and then had just regrown like that because no one was taking care of it. So we got to fix that dog's jaw on top of a bunch of other things, but. Well, yeah, that's, that's really cool. Cause we're animal lovers as well. And it's, it's sad to see some of the things that go on with, you know, people just don't really understand. It's actually a person that lives with you that you have to take care of. And, and if they do something wrong, then it's like, well, shoot, you're gone. Yeah. You know, the thing I love about dog rescue in particular is, you know, it's kind of like secondhand dogs, right? Nobody, like they didn't just end up at the shelter. It's somebody had them, got rid of them. And I feel like that's kind of relatable to a lot of people that ride motorcycles. It's like, we all come from these crazy different backgrounds and maybe we didn't fit in anywhere. And then we found motorcycles. At least that's how I feel. And then it was kind of like this second home. It's kind of this new beginning that you have a family. For yeah, sure. That's true. So let's talk a little bit about that then. So your background, you grew up in Marion, Illinois. Yeah, Southern Illinois. And so you ended up going to college, graduating, mm -hmm. and then you're kind of a math whiz too, I understand. <laughs> yeah. So I went to the Illinois Math and Science Academy for high school, wow. UFI for college, had a full ride scholarship. And then I was like, fuck all of it. I'm going to move to LA and take my clothes off for a living. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly. But you know, you come out here and you get booked on like an HBO show and they're like, oh, can you do this sexy scene? And you know, it's kind of one of those things. So HBO Showtime, AMC, those kind of shows. So what was that moment? that you're like, I'm just, I'm going to LA. Um, was there a change? Not, and you don't, if, if it's deep, you don't have to. No, it's okay. Let's get deep. Uh, I just knew, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I, I knew I always loved entertainment. I always loved making people laugh. And if people were having a bad day, like giving a little bit of a, a distraction. Right. And so, yeah, I just, I graduated college and a few days later, I worked my last shift at Hooters. I didn't walk during my graduation. I was like, I'm gonna work at Hooters. I'm gonna make a bunch of money. I'm gonna tell all the dads that come in, like, oh, I couldn't walk at my graduation because I had to bartend here. Made a ton of money and then jumped in my car with my dog Cheeto and we drove out to LA. I didn't know anybody. Wow. I just typed LA into my GPS and I drove out here and I started staying with people that I met at bars. And I really? typed on Facebook. I was like, hey, if you have friends in LA, um, you want to give them my phone number? That would be cool. And I kind of couch hopped for like the first six months. That's pretty brave. Yeah. That's pretty bold, brave, <laughs> adventurous. For sure. You know, wow. For sure. I don't recommend it really for other people. And if I had to go back, I, I mean, I'm so glad I did it, right. you know, for sure. But now that I'm older, I'm like, whew, I like having a bed that I know I'm going to sleep in. <laughs> right, right. Is your family still back there? Uh, they're kind of all over some family in Southern Illinois, some family in Florida, because I feel like they tend to gravitate down there. Yeah. So yeah. Illinois, that's where Route 66 ends up. Yeah, which was so cool. And that was uh, definitely a big decision maker of like, oh, I'm going to end in Chicago and then go visit the fam down south. And We'll get into that in a little bit about <laughs> yeah, so our Route 66 journeys. When you look back, you, you're glad you made the leap. Oh, for sure. Uh, this is my home and everything that's happened so far has led to this point. You know, right now I get to ride motorcycles and hang out with cool people. So it doesn't get much better than I that. I mean, I kind of did the same thing. I was like going nowhere i was in college and we were doing you know not grown-up things it was more <laughs> like so a buddy and i actually moved out to california and he went back about nine months later a year later i ended up staying i wanted to go back with more money than i came out with and i came out with eight hundred dollars so i'm like <laughs> i've got to work until i get over eight hundred dollars in my pocket to go back home and that day never came. It's still 32 years, 34 years later. So how much do you need to get that 800? So I've got 800 home. now. You can go home now. Oh, 
<laughs> things are expensive in LA. It's hard to save money here. <laughs> I know, but you know, and and I too, the the leap of faith, you know, and and but that tells Lance and I a lot about your character, right? Right, that you're you're a survivor. You're deep, make you're stuff passionate, happen. you For make sure. shit happen. High risk, high reward. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What are you riding right now? I have a little Sportster. Uh, she's a 2006. It was the last year of the carburetor. And uh, she's got pink flames on her. I see you on an ST with some bags if you're going to be traveling. You know what? After doing cross country <laughs> on a Sportster, I don't ever need to do it again. So yeah. <laughs> Eagle Rider honestly was like, oh, do you want like a, a touring bike or something bigger to go cross country? And I was like, well, my bike is starting to get a little bit of recognition everywhere we go. And I was like, I feel like I got to like, I got to take her with me. But check that off the list. And now Eagle Rider. Now you can go do, yeah, <laughs> now, again, but, and do it yeah. on a I know what you're saying because our bikes, the colors we have for a couple of years are highly recognizable we have had people hit us up on the phone as we're riding by on the freeway and yes. say go over here or go do this but we've been on eagle rider bikes and still got that same thing so we know that once you're on a bike for a few minutes they understand you and your bike yeah for sure so. yeah we were somewhere in oklahoma and he got a text from a friend jiggers over here in the corner uh got a text from Why a don't friend you poke saying your head in real quick to say hello <laughs> get in here say hi can you see him? Uh, yes. <laughs> All right. It's peeking in the corner. Oh, wait, tell us, tell him your name. Tell him what you're up to. Come on. Just right here. Just hey, guys. I'm Jigger. Uh, I am the behind the scenes guy with me and Cody doing our Route 66 charity ride. Woo. Yeah. Thanks for having us, guys. Glad you're here. <laughs> He's the one that makes things happen. I'm just the face of the product. <laughs> I've actually had a hidden camera on him the whole time. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Excellent work, Josh, as always. Oh, yeah. Make sure to like and subscribe for the behind the scenes footage. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, 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 so tell, since you're on that, where do they find you? What's, what are your Instagram? Oh, yeah. Or... Um, you can find me pretty much everywhere at Hey, it's Code E. So, C O D W -E, E, um, like Code Red. My name is C O D Y, but then I actually had. <laughs> like a rap album out and so i was like i'm code e <laughs> and yeah it was the whole okay, thing we're gonna get into that yeah. <laughs> uh yeah i had a single out it's called hashtag bds which also existed before like that's a now that's not like a different movement but that stands for big dick swagger and no. that was also before big dick energy so i feel like i really paved the way for a lot of other stars <laughs> to come in but um <laughs> yeah so hey it's code e and that's pretty much where you can find me on everything on Instagram, you had something. Else. Did you lose it? Are you um, good? <laughs> uh, yeah, you we, flattened it out. BDS <laughs> is uh, Bent Dixon syndrome. <laughs> Big Dick Swagger. No, Bent Dick syndrome. Oh, oh, Bent Dick syndrome. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but there is a syndrome. There is. Yeah, there is that. There is that. I don't know a lot about that, seeing as how I don't have one. But <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, go. I. You're, you blanked it. it just slept. So, <laughs> was that your first cross country road trip? Yes. On a motorcycle. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yes. So, um, yeah, I came home one day and I was like, Jigger, I have this idea. And he's always like, oh no, because <laughs> he doesn't, where is this going to go? And I was like, we should drive cross country because, you know, Hollywood's on strike right now and we have free time that we don't normally have. We're workaholics and we're always grinding. So, we have a little bit of time. I'm like, let's ride cross country. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah whatever. Because before that, the furthest I had ridden was Santa Barbara. And so he's like, why wow. don't we test it out? Why don't we like ride to Arizona and see how you like it? I'm like, no, we're just, Let's just go. We're going to go to Chicago. We're going to ride. And we, you know, we're going to ride like 2,000 miles. <laughs> Again, it's there. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I was afraid that I wouldn't like it. I was afraid that we would go to Arizona. I'd be like, nah, I'm good. You know? And so I was like, we just got to go balls to the wall. And um, I fell in love with it. And it was a 10 day trip. But day seven, I'm like, where are we going next? Where are we going next? You know, we're so tired. And we're in the middle of it. And I'm already like fantasizing about the next trip. So it is addictive. I mean, nothing better than riding a bike with gear on it, stopping at a place, eating dinner, getting a hotel, waking up, putting the bag back on and knowing that you're going to keep going. Yeah. That's awesome. It's such like a... Is it okay that I cuss? I keep yep. cussing. Yeah, okay. It's it. such like a mind fuck though, because when you think about I'm going to ride over 2000 miles, that seems overwhelming. But when you break it down to just like, yeah, I'm waking up, going to go the next, my sports has to get fueled up every hundred miles. So we're just going a hundred more miles, do, 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 you know, the next stop and you get off and you stretch and you're like, all right, the next hundred miles. And that made a lot of sense to me. What's the most you've done in one day on that trip? 
Um, we did a little over 400 miles. That's a good haul. Yeah. You know, because we're filming too, that takes up so much time. So we're really putting in 10 or 11 hour days. But she's doing, she's on a sports I know. Like, <laughs> that's like, but like you said, pretty gnarly. Like, I did that for a couple of years on a soft tail. Yep. We, I did Route 66 on that, bunch of cross country. Lance, Juan, all the guys. Maybe you guys have been just baggers, right? We're baggers. We're, but for we're the most baggers. part, we've all kind of paid our dues with the smaller bikes, right? Yeah. You know? I, I did Kernville on the Diana on Lance's uh, up and back. I love that bike. That's yeah. my favorite bike of all time. Definitely. But, good bike. but part of that, you know, that mystique about the next day's riding is the stories that you had the night before or the day before. It's like, can it get any better? And then it's like, now you run into someone else, right? I mean, you, you had so many stories during that trip, not just of the riding, but of people you met. For sure. And it felt like when I was the most tired is when we would run into like the coolest people, right. and the coolest experience. And um, like we ran into these guys at this random gas station in the middle of nowhere. And they had this yellow 1958 Corvette, Corvette, Corvette. And like they get out of the car and it, it was like Willie Nelson got out of the car, you know, and his buddy. And he's like, yeah, I've owned this since 1958. And they're like, we've done this road trip so many times. And we just start talking to them. And then, you know, when those interactions happen, we could usually tell them about the charity, you know. Right. And so then people would throw money at us, you know. And then like this guy was like, I actually built a dog rescue in my hometown, you know. And you're just like, what? That is so, what are the chances? How did so I crazy. run into that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so oh, it was so cool. I and mean, we had so many cool things planned along the way too, like the fantastic caverns. So then like, we're just in a cave for two hours after riding all day, you know, like just so many cool experiences. It's definitely cool. I mean, we, we kind of, how many days did it take us to do Route 66? I think we did it in seven, but same deal. That's uh, well, what we had to go to Milwaukee and... too. So yeah, maybe it was five. Yeah, maybe. F I think it was five. Basically, like days? so basically yeah. what i'm getting at is we kind of blitzed it but we yeah. covered a lot yeah and saw a lot but after that we're like we could have done this in two weeks and met more people and hung out in more places and you know yeah there was a couple that was in a trailer and they had a license plate or a fake license plate that said route 66 and it was both their birthdays they were both 66 <gasps> on the doing route 66. Oh my gosh, so, which I hear is what you want to do. I'm going to do that. We're going to do that. We're going to do it. I don't know if we're going to go I'm reverse. Not, I'm not doing that. I'm doing it. He's so on, do it. On, on, I'm 66. I'm I spaced out for a second. What are we talking about? My uh, 66th birthday. And what, what Why is would it? I do it? I don't know. Oh, because you were born in 56. 1966. Oh. Yeah. So there's a lot of little connections. For yeah. sure. It, it was established in November of 66 which i my birthday is november 2020s or 1926 is when it was established right. yes and my parents 26. i was born in michigan and when i was a year old they drove out on route 66 to california wow i wasn't with them i, I was on a plane with my grandmother but yeah wait a second so i don't know what this whole mean. time Whenever you told that story, right. I was under the impression you were in the back seat and you drove <laughs> Route 66 yourself. Myself, not yourself, but as a baby in the back sure. seat. Well, and now you're you come under to the tell impression. That's cool because it was a great time for you to think. Oh. <laughs> well, you <laughs> lied. lied. To I didn't lie. I just told you the truth. I never wrote it. I flew it. Uh, <laughs> you're still in <laughs> secret today. Yeah. Fly route I was 66. I was six months old. I flew over it. He didn't know any better. He was six months old. My grandmother yeah. grabbed my arm and she went like this. Look, I think your mom and dad are down there. Good. Oh, Lord have mercy. Well, if you guys need someone to show you around a little bit, because it sounds like we stopped at different places, uh, I'm your lady. We, well, we will maybe take you up on that, but I bet we stopped at every place you and more because we were doing 900 miles an hour and it was just quick. No, <laughs> but a collab trip like that would be awesome. I think so. Um, one of the favorite, one of my favorite memories was uh, Tukum Curry, the Blue Swallow Motel, yeah. one of the last moto courts, motor yeah. courts, moto courts. Uh, you know, the owners were so sweet and just sitting on like the patios with everybody. Everyone right. has their little chairs out there was so cool and there was this lady who we got to tell her about the dog charity and she donated money and so i gave her a shirt uh her and her husband shirts and then the next morning we come out and he's loading up his car and he's got his little shirt on yeah. which has like chopper with the pink doggles which brings me to my oh, next oh, thing oh. is i brought you guys some shirts 
Oh, see, there's something in the story for us. Yes. Yes. I'm like, where am I going to tie it in? I found it. Um, yes. Yeah, so we brought you some shirts. This is from the charity. So we've got our motto, shift gears, change nice. lives. Right. And that's Chopper's look. little face. I might have to get an extra one from you because our friend David, who has the dog Chico. Yeah. We showed Jag Jagger, Jigger, yeah. the picture of him. And he's got goggles and a hat. That's you. Thank you, Cody. I feel like it's dangerous I to throw it with all the equipment. Oh, throw it. You got it. <laughs> I can't tell you how excited I am to add a 29th black shirt to my closet. <laughs> Black and pink, uh, yo. Black Appreciate and pink. That. Well, this is cool. We have Chopper. Yeah. Look at that. Love it. Shift awesome. gears, change Thank lives. Yeah, Thank for you. sure. And now when people see you guys riding across America, they'll also be like, and you've got Cody's shirt on. Right. We'll definitely make a point <laughs> to do that for sure. But uh, yeah, maybe we'll do a whole production. We'll do a little documentary of Route 66. So that's literally, that's, that's our plan is we did this, um, you know, the ride and we filmed everything and we are putting it up on YouTube. Actually, our first episode came out today. It's up already. We'll Shameless have to plug. Watch it. And what channel is on that? So I can link it in here. Yeah. So it's called Iron Pony Show. It's okay. kind of our working title, you know, cause it's like the iron horse is like a chopper, but I'm little. So it's like the iron pony. <laughs> and then choppers are iron puppy. <laughs> um so yeah so we're like you know throwing all the footage up there but i the plan is to make a sizzle reel on a pitch deck and send it to whoever wants to look at it and say hey let's actually come out there with a real camera crew instead of just me and jigger on our iphones you know and let's let's make this into a thing well and i think that's i mean if you think about what happened in 2020 and 2021 we that's the reason we did a documentary on route 66 or at least part of it because those people lost so much in tourism. You know, there was no one from Europe or no one from Asia coming across. And that's mega because there's big tour buses that come into these little towns and their stories aren't being heard at all. Yeah. And they almost were on the brink of bankruptcy, you know, and and for us to go out there and showcase and all of a sudden they started getting people coming into their business. And then to see like last year, this year in Sturgis, People were back again, Canadians, Europeans, uh, you know, and it, it, that couple of years took a lot out. And so I hope that someone picks up the pitch because it, it's important to tell the stories of these small towns and what you miss. You know, the railroads were there, the, the mining was there, and all of a sudden here comes these interstates and it's like cars, at Disney all over, right? Like these things dry up and they're, but now it's tourism. So how do you keep that showcase in front of them? And something like that on a bigger base would, would be, I think, very helpful for but them. It, it's interesting too. And we've said this before, and I always say it, it's like, it's a bummer. They built the interstates and took away route 66. But then in a sense, it's not a bummer because if that didn't happen, there wouldn't be this nostalgia of route 66 and people wanting to go see what's there if it was there it'd just be out oh, here's how we get to la from so sure as hell no nostalgia over i-10 no <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i feel like you know you go to england and there's castles that have been there for centuries and you know everywhere else has history so much longer than ours and right. i feel like route 66 is like so american right. and so ours Americana. no we're so young yeah. for sure and we stayed in the wigwams in cave city the cement you know uh, teepees yeah. uh, with Letitia Klein. We did a piece out there with her, but um, it was kind of cool because we met the owner. We did an interview with him and you think about the history of it. They, they're getting some people now coming back in to relive what was happening back in the sixties. And at that time it was, we could now get a car, a motor vehicle to go a little bit further. We started vacationing as Americans and so you'd go into these little nostalgic hotels and motels and motor courts. And, and at the wigwam, if you notice, they're, the teepees are built around the center of the property or outside. And now there's a center. And in that center, there's a play yard, there's benches, there's picnic tables, there's a fire pit. And people are now starting to come back in and do that. And he said, it's amazing to come outside and watch the kids running around and playing together and families starting to interact with each other. And I, I find that cool. So I hope that you pitch this and you get picked up 
and you go show the the justice that this little place needs. So it's like a cast of five, six, seven people. Looks like it. <laughs> exactly, because we all bring something really different to right. the table. <laughs> we got it'll give us a diverse landscape of riders going to this. Exactly. Imagine well, me still on the sports journey. I'm like, I'll catch up to you guys. <laughs> me. Well, we have a rule: if you ride a Sturgis with us, you can't, if you can't do more than 200 miles on you one can't. tank. No, you that's, can't fair. Ride. that's fair. I mean, yeah, I saw you guys just did like a, over a thousand miles in the day, and I was like, what? Mm -hmm. That was crazy, but it was fun. But that was our that was our way of like, in a way, saying you'd have a lot of guys go. I want to go to Sturgis with you guys. Oh, you got a dinosaur. You, you, yeah. you got to be able yeah. to go 200 miles plus, yeah. and then. Yeah, but I, we, oh, oh, go ahead. No, well, I just I love the idea of these challenges because again, okay, fat like rewind to four months ago, I'd gone 300 miles, and now I'm like, I could go 2,000 miles in, in less days, you know, maybe five days or whatever. And now I'm like, but why not try a thousand miles in a day? That sounds fun, you know. Whereas, like, that would not have that didn't sound fun. Like, it's so actually not ago. fun, it's gnarly, <laughs> yeah. And it's like, all right, I did it, we've done it several times, it's yeah. not that bad. We didn't do like an iron butt thing, right officially even yeah we did it yes we did yeah it's our official iron but i know but that's the guy's you know it's okay website and vibe Great. And, you know <laughs> and we don't need the certificate no but others do and they should they should do it what i was just gonna say we had some people get pretty butthurt over that that's not legit you didn't really do i know it. like but whatever they oh meant. well yeah, yeah you're always gonna have haters no matter should have kept my hey i'm sure we've got a few comments do we um we do have I, a few I'm comments sure you've been responding i've been responding putting them up on the screen but i think that the conversation is so captivating people are just enjoying it really i did get an email i just uh -oh. checked my email while we're doing this and i just wanted to give a shout out to our viewer turned fan turned friend jason belsky who works for mbs lighting that hooked up this whole studio with lighting. He was just tuning in, shot me a message to say the sound is a hundred times better than last week. Oh, hey, the lights hey. look great and the videos look great. So thank well, you. Well, we had to do that I for Cody, it. right? I mean, we can't. True. Spend all know. this time putting makeup on. Let's just show right. it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for the help. And, and MBS and as well. MBS, thank you so much. Like, and I'm glad we spent a little bit of time trying to get the sound right yesterday. Oh. I appreciate that. Yeah. The sound is important. We're, we were confused. Yeah. You know? I am the least tech savvy person. So, yeah, well, yeah I am so grateful that you guys do that. So, you've done a few different TV series? Yeah. What are they? Yeah. So, I was in Breaking Bad. I was in the movie, El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie. And uh, that was awesome because I got to ad lib a line about Cheeto. I was like, I just want to go home and take a bath with my dog. <laughs> Not in a weird way. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, that was really cool. I was with, you know, Aaron Paul and the whole gang for a week down in New Mexico and Albuquerque filming. And that was really cool. Uh, and then, yeah, I did three episodes of the Mayans which is just so in line because motorcycles and everything. Um, that audition was like a, I was the bartender at the Sons of Anarchy bar. Okay. So it was really cool. It's so fun because, you know, they'll just give you, I think it was one line, you know, and it's, um, uh, sorry, oh, sorry, we're all out of Corona or whatever it is. And so you could just be there and you'd be like, sorry, we're out of Corona, you know, the end. Or like, I'm like, okay, so I like have my bar towel and I start like, and I'm over here cleaning and I look like someone's annoying me and I come back and then I'm like, I go to check the, it's all made up, right? I check the the cooler and I'm like, oh, sorry, tear all the Corona or whatever it is, you know? And it's like now that, you know, this one line turned into a 15 second audition, but there you get you to, you know, that there was so much life in it. And right. so that is like the really fun, creative part for me. And then when you get validation and they're like, we love it, come on. And then they kept writing me in. So they're like, come this day, come this day. And awesome. Yeah. Then I had the chance to be like, oh, I ride motorcycles, by the way. And they're like, oh, we'll try to bring that in. And um, the plan is for them to keep doing more series. So they want to do uh, like a spinoff for Jax Teller's son, maybe. Or they want to do something with um, the female biker gang that they just introduced this season. Right. And so I'm kind of like, do that one. But, yeah, um, yeah, you yeah. know. And then it was so crazy because we were at the bike shed. And... Um, and we were, you know, we had our stickers and our flyers. And every time I was there, I was kind of trying to tell people about the charity ride. And uh, these two sexy ladies were leaving. And I was like, I feel a vibe with them. And we start talking with them. And she's like, oh, I actually know you from my end. She goes, I worked on the show, too. She goes, I stunt doubled for a lot of the girl bikers or whatever. And I was oh, like, wow. oh, I love that. That's so awesome. And so then, you know, just the circles 
are so right. small and then you know it's like a little family so nice. you do stunt work as well still or you did yeah so i do stuff like i've done like fight choreography or like wire work so you know you're doing like flips on wires um got to hit matthew mcconaughey's step double off with a motorcycle helmet so lots <laughs> of like little fun gigs like that um i'm not out there popping wheelies yet on right. my harley but um i've definitely taken some wheelie classes and i can like get up there on the dirt bike but um but yeah mostly when it when i say like riding for people it's like point a to point b or right. maybe you have a passenger and you're like lane splitting or whatever that kind of stuff um which i love because as a as a young actor you walk on set and sometimes people don't really take you seriously of course. um but as a stunt person especially with a motorcycle they're just like oh okay like battles yeah. coming through really? you're like yes yeah, sir so <laughs> lance did a stunt on uh chips Oh yeah. He was in a, a chase scene and they jumped over the ramp on the beach in Long Beach and he turned around and had a gun and then and then they imposed it to be from a Suzuki to a, a Ducati street bike, all the CGI. Wow. So but it, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I worked on um nine one one Lone Star, one of one of them. And you know, again, I was a stunt driver that day, but that doesn't necessarily mean there's like the hero car who's like the main person and then they're, they're chasing the person. But all the people around them are also stunt people because they have to get out of the way right. and all that stuff. And it was, you know, a whole 18 hour day just doing this one stunt that is really cool. And it's like this whole scene. Um, but yeah, I, I love the stunt work. It's that's also really addicting, especially when the stakes are really high, like, okay, like this car's gonna get blown up, you only have one shot to do it or whatever. And you're like, okay. So actually in um, El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie, there's a big warehouse explosion and it didn't go off in time. So uh, I think what made the cut in the movie is Aaron Paul's like looking in the reflection of the car mirror. And it's like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then I get, you know, but he's still <laughs> acting, you know, and then all of a sudden it blows up. But I guess that was like 10 seconds late. So oh. his reaction is real. Right. So I just love stories like yeah, that too, where you're like, sure. okay, just stay in it, stay in it. Because if you, you know, if he was like, oh, sorry. And then it blew up. You'd be like, ah. So. I've done some stunt work myself. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hasn't been picked up yet, <laughs> but I'll show you pictures after. Oh, uh, okay. I like to ride my bagger up the hills and through dirt things and but you could have no, got extra pay for doing that no one's right picking it up yeah. we've been pitching that sam cell phone video for four years and i, know, no I can't believe it, it. <laughs> like, i can't wait to see it maybe i can help you i can be your liaison okay <laughs> i'll take that have you uh, ever been to moab no so moab is great you guys would really like moab you got to go through there sometime but we took a ride in a jeep or a toyota land cruiser with one of josh's friends who gave us a tour of canyon lands and he took us to Thelma and Louise Point, where they drove the car off the like thousand foot cliff. Yeah. But they didn't have real people in that. I that didn't was... know where he was going with Moab. <laughs> See, was, the, the, I, I yeah, got it. Now. Yeah. I you had I, to get to Thelma and Louise. Then that, I was going, yeah. oh, I got it. Yes, yes. So you like so you fun. like Moab. You ride there, you'll dig it. Yeah. I want to well, ride now everywhere. You're a mile crusher. Yes. I mean, you, know, you can pretty much go in. You know. Right, right. <laughs> For sure. Oh, you know, it's a, kind of something else funny with that is, um, you know, I also do the modeling thing and more so when I was younger, but it's like I would walk on set to like, you know, shoot with a motorcycle and people just kind of think like, you know, oh, yeah. you're that. And I'm like, no, no, but I actually ride and I would pitch it to the magazine. I'm like, hey, can we shoot with my bike and can I tell my story? And, you know, they would kind of like laugh at you a little bit. They're like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Just like put the bikini on and shut up and take some photos, you know. So I also feel like not that it's I mean, it's been validating. That wasn't the point of anything. But now it's like people are coming to me saying like, hey, we want you to do this thing. Whereas before it was just like, oh, the cute girl in the corner with somebody else's bike and somebody else's story. Right. So do you own a car? Yeah, I got hit. This I've been hit three times in what? L.A. on my bike. And so the no last way. time, yeah, Jeez. I was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> None of them have been like on the freeway, which has been great. But the last time a Dodge Ram was turning left and didn't see me. And so I'm always turning left. Always. It was from Florida and it was this macho guy. I had to chase him down. It was crazy. So you but, got hit, but you were able to chase him down. Still. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had to go to physical therapy for my, therapy for my shoulder and stuff. But um, after that, my bike was in the shop for like four months. And I, I was like, I'm going to get a car. And I was going to get like a cheap beater. And then I fell in love with the silver Mustang convertible. So yeah. it's kind of like being in a bike, you know? You're mm, right, right. Wow. Yeah, we we uh, gave up on cars. 
You don't have cars? No. <gasps> no, no, no. Well, you have a truck you don't use. Yeah, they try to convince me to sell my truck last week. I might. We'll see. I love that. I didn't I mean, have I didn't have a car for four years and rode everywhere, which again with the gig work, sometimes I'm packing like a whole bag of like shoes on top of a whole bag of tiny dresses. And like I would have my like my bag of Louboutins, you know, and then they're like strapped to my bike riding around. And well, Digger like, has a truck. He does have a truck. That's helpful. And then we got Kendon Industries sent us a motorcycle trailer um, because. I feel like a trailer princess, but we we did the Route 66 ride there, but I didn't want to come back. We had to do it faster, you know? And I was like, I don't want to ride back in three days. Like, let's trailer. I can drop footage, whatever, and the dog can chill. And we'll, like, get to hit stops that we couldn't along. Anyway, so I got a, a trailer, and they painted it hot pink for us. And so now we've got, like, the truck and trailer thing. And we're Where do you park it, then? So it folds up. It's a yes. dual motorcycle folding, uh, Kendon Industries, but um, it folds up. So it's just, like... Tiny. Oh, so it's tiny. Yeah. So it just goes in our parking space, yeah. which is we've managed to squeeze, yeah, the truck, the trailer, and three bikes in one parking space. Now, have you been to Sturgis? No. So you'll have to go to Sturgis next year. It's a great journey. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. don't know if I can ride with you guys because you just said a thousand miles in a day, but no, maybe. No, okay. no me either. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what hotel are you staying at? We'll no, I think we're, you're, we like really 300 mile days. Sturgis? And That's the sweet spot. What are you talking about? We've done oh, that. Oh, we have. Yeah. Where we Typically, go in, we get in early. We on regular time. trips, yeah. Sometimes we'll do less, like 300. We'll chill, eat at restaurants. Because as you guys know, filming, if you stick to that, it's easier to actually capture things, not rush too much. Yeah. You're still doing tons of miles. I mean, we're yeah. talking about it earlier, right? You have to stop and film, and it takes a, it's a nine-hour day now, and that's the same with us, but what kind of the cool thing that happened with it is we're picking up twilight hour now, which is the best time to shoot. Mm -hmm. But and the cool thing is also is when we get in early, it never failed. We'd go eat, we'd end up in the bar, we'd end up stumbling out of the bar, walking back to the rooms. And we always, when we go, we always want to park our bikes for the day. That's it. Now we're on foot. Mm -hmm. so you but you guys really don't want. stumble back anymore. No, we've cleaned up our act. Right. <laughs> I don't know. The episode it's a I just watched. You guys were hitting well, it pretty funny. hard. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because we say that, but then they look at a Sturgis episode and we're just going crazy. So maybe haven't drinking since Sturgis, but that week I was. Uh, we well, I think our last heavy. Canada drop with the Sun Mountain Lodge, you were feeling pretty good. Yeah, I end. took, and then I was <laughs> feeling pretty good. Still in secrets. Half again. my response I couldn't even put in there. I was just yapping. I, we had a kid. I took my bike to get the brake fluid cleaned <clears throat> out this morning over at Harley Davidson, and uh, the, the mechanic that was doing it, he's just like so blown away with our channel. And how did you guys get to do this and make it happen? And like, it was just all. And he just turned and looked at me and went, "You guys are the Rolling Stones of riding motorcycles." <laughs> I love it. I'm like, I'll take that. <laughs> I love that. I wish. <laughs> We've got kind of like the ZZ Top vibe going a little bit too. Like he's got ZZ Top. <laughs> yeah. So we do have our first question for Cody from Just Killing Bugs. Just Killing Bugs said, bug. "Cody, what was your favorite moment slash moments of your cross country trip?" Oh, so many amazing moments. Um, sight wise, riding through like New Mexico and Arizona, because I'm from Illinois. And so you get a very specific, you know, you get the green trees and everything. But I hadn't really seen like what the plot, like the red sand and the plateaus or whatever. I don't know what everything's called. But um, that was just really, really breathtaking to me. And um yeah, I just felt like those are things that I'd only seen like in textbooks. So that like really took my breath away. And then, yeah, catching something at sunset. Yeah. You know, and you're just like, wow, this is beautiful. You need to do some southern Utah and northern Arizona and you'll see a lot of what you just said. Yeah. But I think our favorite we decided was kind of Missouri. Missouri like, was gorgeous. We were in, it we were was in pretty mind blowing. It was kind of the fall of the year, yeah. right? And so we were getting, you know, the leaves down on the road. And so we're whoever's in front of spraying and it's like. You're we're filming like, yeah, leaves. Now we're artists filming leaves. Right. Yeah. It was beautiful. Yeah. We had the same experience. 
experience. We were hiking Fern Cliff in Illinois and the wind would blow and it would it would sprinkle down like snow, the yeah. different colored leaves. And we were like, we were trying to like capture it in slow motion. <laughs> like it was so funny. I just think because I'm from there that right. I was like, okay, like I've seen the greener. But yeah, the rolling hills in Missouri was just beautiful. And again, you'd be so tired. And then all of a sudden you just be like, take a breath. And also the smells, you could the smells like you can smell the rain before it comes. Yeah. You can smell the cows before you see them. Um, Finding old bridges and old buildings. Just yeah. so much cool but, stuff. but that's why we call it two lane life. Right. And and so you just you the fur, furthest you'd ridden was Santa Barbara. So you're smelling, you know, maybe a little bit of ocean. If you went up through the orange groves, you're going to smell that strawberry field, strawberry. But mm -hmm. you're not what you just experienced over 2000 miles is completely different because yeah. you went into different states with different climates, with different topography. And it's like, you're right. You, did you smell the rain when you rode to Santa Barbara? No. <laughs> and you found that on this journey. Yeah, for right? sure. Got to use my rain gear for the first time. Yeah. I don't know if that was my favorite part, but was... we've, we've been caught in uh, some heavy winds. We've been caught in sandstorms. We've been caught in snowstorms. We rode, the three of us, we did the loneliest highway in America, which is in Nevada, Highway 50, and pulling into Ely, Nevada, we rode for probably an hour in 14 degree weather. At 90. Wow. Josh couldn't even get so his hands So probably off 10 degree bars. weather. It was gnarly. Wow. But <laughs> it maybe wasn't your favorite thing, but at the same time, you can now say as a rider, hey, for sure. I put rain gear on. I've yeah. ridden through for the sure. rain. It was one for the books. And then, you know, riding sideways through the states that were super open, you know, just wind through wind, the plains. Yeah. You're yeah. like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so That's what's cool. next for you? What projects do you have coming up or do you? Um, I actually have a movie coming out on Friday, but really? we are not allowed to talk about it because of the strike. But um, it is on that. Wait, no, I can't say that word. Um, it's on a streaming platform and it's with Bill Burr. Okay. So oh, that's no really exciting because I love him and he was hilarious and he produced and wrote and starred in this project, which I always just admire people that can do that too. Cause that's what we're trying to do, you right, know, kind right. of just make our own content. And, um, yeah, so that was, that so was really it's fun. Friday. Yeah. And we, this tomorrow. was not a plant question. I just wondered. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, for sure. Um, yeah, I have another shoot with Easy Riders Magazine that's supposed to come up. Um, was I, that the post where you're saying you were trying on motorcycle clothing? No, that is actually a commercial that we're shooting on Saturday. So, um, and again, a lot of times we don't get a lot of information. It's just like, hey, you need to be here with your right. bike. Can we take your shield off? You know, kind of all these um, but we get to film. They sent me a picture. We've got like the Russian arm on a car. So we're filming like with that, which always just feels very official, you know, it's like, oh, it's a we big did connection. A, we did a shoot with Harley and they had the, a Porsche with the big jib arm and the camera riding down Pacific Coast Highway with the camera right in your face, you know. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. Which is so, it's interesting too, because if you've never done it before, like it's a different type of writing. It's like a different skill set. Um, you know, like that's what precision writing is. And right. so I think so many people think like, oh, you ride motorcycles. So yeah, that's easy. But it's like, no, no, no. You kind of have to learn the same way that when a camera comes on you doing this some people get weird, some people get better, some people get worse. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, it was definitely a, a new experience for us, but uh, we're flying down PCH and where the big rock is point Magoo rock or whatever it's called. But, and all of a sudden this arm just swings in front of you and it's like sitting with the camera right here over the, and you're just like, yeah, through. that's jarring. <laughs> we, we have so many miles together as a team. And even with Lance and Juan, it, the guys who go to Sturgis that we could be like inches apart. We could touch each other. We, we, we move together. We, we can break together. So we're so synchronized from just time and time of being, on the road together. Like you can tell, I can see a shoulder move or a head move and, and know and peel out and he, you know, we peel together and it's, it's kind of fun. Yeah. yeah. Jigger and I definitely have that together because we've ridden so much. And then you, you take it for granted sometimes when you get in a group of people you haven't ridden with and you're like, Oh no, this yeah. is so like, you're not, we're not on the same page. You know? No. Well, we were not calm people at all. We're like hand signals um, and you know, oh, oh! I, I thought you said calm. calm. I was like, yeah, but, yeah. But well, we're not calm either, usually. <laughs> um, but we introduced these maybe two years ago, and uh, 
I mean, I, if you don't have them, people should get them, especially if you're writing in a group, because it's, it's so much safer. You can, you can talk to people about braking or someone turning left or, you know, speed up or slow down. And we had a couple guys with us on the way back from Sturgis that weren't calmed up. And we're all talking about the shots, and they're they don't know what the yeah. hell is going on. But even the danger situations, we're all like, "Hey, yeah. everybody, break left!" Hey, oh, Duper can't hear us. Duper doesn't know what's going on. He's going right in the wrong, you know. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I love my Cardo, and they sent us a bunch of stuff for our trip, so that was awesome. So that's what we use. Yeah, I know. I'm like, oh, a lot of our brands really align. That's yes, so, that's yes. so nice. And um, for those of you that don't know that are watching. We got a website, twoinlap.com. You can find Cardos, all the parts you need. Just a quick want. plug. Just a quick plug. A little, little short plug. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I and love what it. is what is Cody's information? Where do they find that? Well, they can find that in the video description. Okay. You and Cody, what, I mean? what is your information? You can find me everywhere at hey, it's code E, C O D double E. Why double E? I mean, that's kind of, you're your code e. There he Why? goes. He wants answers <laughs> big, now. Big swagger. That big dick swagger. And there's a dance. There's a dance. It involves your arms swinging between your legs. Okay. <laughs> so here you have Cody. Cody, who is an actress, an adventurous, uh, ride, she rides motorcycles, um, does dog charity, animal charity. Yeah. So you're busy. Yeah. You're busy. And and you mentioned Cheeto. So yeah. Cheeto's still around? Yeah, Cheeto's kicking it. She's 14. Wow. And uh she makes it into our video that we just posted on YouTube, the LA local charity ride. There's some really cute pictures of her. Little shout out to Cheeto. And Cheeto's a Chihuahua. Is she's Cheeto a Chihuahua? A is Cheeto Yeah, yes? she's a Chihuahua poodle. So she's like this oh. funky looking, very unique dog. Um, <laughs> she loves clothes. She has more clothes than I do. Really? And then he's got all of her hand me downs, so he wears pink a lot, actually. He's a cool like guy. He's yeah. A cool guy. Yes, you are. Um, and she is who I started riding motorcycles with. So okay. I started on a Honda Rebel, a little yeah. 250, and I was so I was mohawking my hair back. Then. so i would like braid the sides and then i would like tease this all up and i thought i was so cool um i wasn't but um yeah i would ride around on this little honda rebel that like to me looked like a mini harley you know and i'm like wrapping around and then yeah one day i this is before this was common because this was nine years ago i like walked into a pet store and they had like a little backpack where the dog's head would stick out and i was like oh you know and the light went off and so i put her in there and she loved it and started riding around with her like that and then i got doggles and then i got leather vest and you know do you have a helmet no i've never had any luck finding a helmet that fits I'll, them we'll look at that after okay chico okay. has got okay. goggles too david goggles in. Goggles. david was riding goggles. with chico and chico likes yeah. to sit in the jacket uh-huh and he crashed and he hit, hit the back of a car and they went flying over and he his main thing was he kept Chico For safe. Sure. Roll did the whole thing. Chico was totally fine. He broke his leg, but Chico was fine. Oh yeah. Chico broke a tooth. Did he? Just oh. a little bit. Oh. That's got a that's no, got a gold he's cap. Got halitosis. Now. What? <laughs> so that's got a gold cap now. Chico's a lot, I think old gangster than, uh, Chico. Old chopper here. But Chico's also he has him just do all these funky he, little he's a really cool dog. Chico's an actor. He is. He'll do whatever. I mean Chopper's you, got some tricks. If you really? shoot, he'll fall over. If you, he'll do whatever his dad says. Yeah. Do. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. I love that. Yeah. I yeah. I I'll have to show you Chopper's tricks. It's so just, uh... you're in L.A. with the Rebel. Yeah. So yep, that was also interesting. Um, <laughs> I had it for I don't know how long I had it for, but then I was at uh, Glendale Harley Davidson and um, it was like a three day weekend thing. So I don't know, Memorial Day or something. And they're like, we're having a sale. And I was like, no, 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 I'm good. And then next thing I know, I'm like walking out of there with the XG 750. Yeah. And it was too big for me, but you know, everyone's like, you're going to do great. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then I ride it home and I try to park it and I fall over. So oh. I dropped this brand new bike Perfect. and then I sat on the curb and I cried. <laughs> And uh, yeah, then I got it lowered and then it was amazing. And I loved that bike. Uh, but turns out uh, when it first came out, they were like, oh, like the salesperson was like, oh, uh, Sportster parts will fit it, blah, 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 the pitch. No, nothing fit it. And then they discontinued it. Right. So they never yeah. made parts for it. Right. So it turned out to be this huge pain. But um, 
yeah, I felt like Catwoman right around her. You know, I had like Batman vibes. <laughs> right. right. Um, and it was like all black and murdered out. And then I rode that to Bartell's Harley Davidson one day to work with them. And then I walked into the showroom and there was the bike I have now. And I was like, what? This that. was like made for me. I'm still trying to find the lady that gave it to them because we should be best friends. Uh -huh. I, I need <laughs> to meet this lady. Um, and yeah, it was it was perfect um i added some things like uh i have a sissy bar with a playboy bunny with skull and crossbones uh across it nice. and uh and then my thrash and supply bag goes over that yeah. Whoa. Yeah. yeah another little plug yeah <laughs> for sure do we pay you for that <laughs> <laughs> oh i think so yeah yeah no you worries. do <laughs> Um, yeah, that made so much of a difference because before camping, I was like bunging everything, you know, which was fine. It worked. Um, my first camping trip, I went to babes right out by oh. myself. Um, I was terrified and but you yeah, met some people. Oh, lifelong friends. Yeah. But I had stuff fall off my bike along the way. And then I pulled over and I was like chasing down this water bottle and it was such and a mess. you sat down and you cried. I did not cry that time. Oh, there did. was no time for crying, but oh my gosh, I actually, <laughs> So Jigger put me in touch with these girls have been posting like, hey, we're all riding by ourselves. We don't know each other. We're going to do a meetup for any solo girls riding. I'm like, great. I'll go make friends. The first stop is like Ventura Harley. And for some reason, like this other girl got there and then parked like weird on a hill. So I parked next to her. And then I wasn't even thinking when we all go to start our bikes, there's like 14 of us. I like go to warm up my bike and it's in gear and it just like I'm on the side of it. I'm not on it. So I just like, you know, touch it and it like takes off and I'm like, ah! And there's a girl standing in front of it, of course, and it runs her over, oh. knocks her bike over, oh. and like broke my tail light. Oh, and then geez. all the guys watching, like, were like, oh, I'm trying to help me pick it up. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. Because, <laughs> um, of course, I'm like the tiny blonde with the pink bike, you know, and everyone else has like their big bikes and they've been, I don't know, doing it forever. And, Shit um, happens. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then we go to the second stop, which was uh, Maholland Harley or I don't know, uh -huh. different yeah. Harley. Yeah, does that make sense along the way? Mm -hmm. And we're riding, and I always ride with ripped jeans, and something in the road, like, got pushed up and, and slipped my knee open. So at the second stop, I'm like, oh, I, there's glass in my leg, and I, like, go inside, and this girl comes up to help me, and she's like... She's like, man, we're just having a lot of bad luck because she's like, some girl just ran me over like at the last stop. And I was like, that was me. <laughs> and she's like, oh, no. Um, she's like, I'm riding away. Yeah, stay away from Cody. So, yeah, that was a crazy trip. Someone uh, threw up in my tent. Oh. And... Um, <laughs> but I got to feed some ostriches. So that was really fun. And yeah, you know. stories have anything to do with each other? The throw up in the tent and the ostriches? No, nope, separate. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, that was. Now, that's... why do you ask a question like that? They were just right after the other. I'm like, I don't know what ostriches eat. So, and sorry. do they lay big eggs? They do. That's what I heard. They run yeah. pretty fast. Are they in well, San Inez? The Can we put your face um, on there when you say I that? I have an ostrich farm. Sometimes I, I do. I was kind of just following Are you on now? I don't know. Hmm. Why? Because I'm not talking. Put it on. Let's see what you have to say over there. I've got absolutely nothing to say. Fair enough. Back to you. <laughs> so if you ever get a chance, ride up out through Santa Barbara, stand 101, and just past Santa Maria, get on Highway 166, and take that to Bakersfield. Have you done it? Great ride, huh? Yeah. To answer your question, it was sent in as in the question. Oh, okay. Santa yeah. is ostrich I, farm. I think I've seen an ostrich farm in that area. Uh, um, Buellton. Yes, yes, Buellton. Yes, off that road. Yes, on the way into Salvin. I think it's called Ostrich Land, maybe. Yeah, it could be. But yeah. also, I go to a lot of petting zoos. Like, uh, we were just in Zion last week and we were riding back in Salvin. Pull over, we gotta pet some goats. Well, the best thing to do is like find a place where there's a lot of bison and go out and get right in them, <laughs> try and pet them. <laughs> or a, or, a, or a, a mother that has a, maybe like a, an elk that has her little babies. Her, well, they're not I know they're not but they're, <laughs> Yeah, that's like really, really good idea. healthy. It's good. It's so run you over. Yeah, so that's Our friend Letitia, you know Letitia Klein? No, but I saw the video you guys did. She's a great rider, awesome, does a lot of cool things. But she was in Sturgis in the in the back Custard. country, Custard, and the bison rammed her. She was her stuck because I think she was there parked, was cars like waiting. She was stuck. What? 
Bison were blocking the road, so she couldn't go anywhere because there was cars. This yep. is just my what I remember from the story. And then yeah, couldn't get away. Charged Bison her. just got her. Why and she ended up a... uh she had had to have knee surgery. Yeah, wrecked her li ligaments. <gasps> oh, torn my... torn apart. Wow, that is new fear unlocked. Thank you. <laughs> well, just don't approach them. Yeah. Because they'll but it's yeah. it's hard to do if you're like in that situation. Yeah. So we yeah, you know, we rode across the plains in Yellowstone and probably 2,000 head of bison. Wow. And one was at the, the road, and we're kind of like, all right, let's stop. Don't make eye contact. Just kind of, and we turned the bikes off, and then we fired the bikes up, and it's, he's, or she, I don't know, was like, and then I went by, and I was like, <gasps> it was, a, it was, it was gnarly because it was really big. It was huge. Yeah. Wow. I think one of the wives got that on video, right? Yeah. 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 Good times. But in my day in Yellowstone, because we have a family cabin up in, in southern Idaho, yeah, south, southeastern Idaho, <clears throat> bears had come up to cars, and people are feeding stuff to the bears. Wow. And they're, they're right in here. You're like, what? I saw a video of a car stop. Window goes down. Little kid yeah, stuck his head out Ooh. the window was doing something, and an elk just like, <clears throat> bam, right in her. Well. Parents, what are you guys doing out yeah. there? Um, Have you guys been to... Arizona? Yes. So fun. Yes. I love that. We like Arizona. Can't do it on a motorcycle, Arizona. but I was in a motorhome in Arizona with my family. Nice. Um, add it to your list because really cool. Like you drive through the park and the animals are just kind of like all over. Yeah. Uh oh. How are we doing on time? Are we crushing um, it? We right are in oh, okay. fifty-six minutes, and we don't have any time limit. So woo. You know. So. We both did Route 66, and we left from Santa Monica at 6 in the morning, and you guys left from Santa Monica. We did it backwards. Yeah. There really is no backwards, but it started in Illinois and worked its way out. Yeah. So I guess it is backwards. But if you're going that way, if you're going from L.A. to – you're going. Yeah. You know. The time change was weird because we, you know, had everything very planned out, and they're like, oh, crap, we lost an hour, like, yeah. you know. But that's always fun. the argument is that it started in Santa Monica. That's the argument. That's the argument. So in Illinois, in or Chicago, started in Southern California. It has not at Santa Monica Pier. Is it Michigan Street? It says end of trail, and on the next block over, the next sign it says beginning. beginning of trail. Mm -hmm. Yep, we discovered yeah. that. Hmm. So I, yeah, I don't know. You know who we need? Oh, yeah. Maybe. Jim Hinckley. Jim Hinckley would know. We need Jim Hinckley. So did it start? Jim, if you're out there watching, uh, call in, dial in. Did it we need a lifeline. Did it, did it meet in the middle? <laughs> yes. So they kind well, of Well, I, I think it started, as I understand, started out west. Then it was like, we've got to get this thing built. And so then they brought them together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we heard a lot of really interesting stories, obviously, along the way from people that knew way more than I do about it. And one of the interesting things was, you know, it doesn't go in like a straight line. Right. And that was because some guy who was on the committee, uh, like, owned a gas station down in, was it Kansas or he somewhere? Wanted, he wanted to cover all the... So he wanted it to, he's like, oh, and there's a bridge down here and we'd have to build a $16 million bridge if it was up there. But the bridge, you know, and he like, so that's why it goes down there and all sorts of stories of like why it is like kind of where it well, is. Well, there it is on our map right behind Josh. You can just see that. Let's side. see if I can... You know what we should it. do? We should get Jim Hinckley on one of our shows and just talk Route 66. Well, he we should do that. We're gonna, yeah, we have a historian friend who did... Took us on a few different tours. He knows everything. Everything. Oh, everything. He was a truck driver, but he's a historian. He has a statue in Kingman now because of all his knowledge of. In Kingman, he everything. actually took us on the Route 66 original route. The old there's only route. like two places where there's like 200 feet of it. Wow. It's still there. That's right off of Route 66. Then Route 66 had a bypass because of the roads were getting clogged and. Then they had another uh, bypass as well. So they're kind of three around that area. I mean, I can't imagine in 1930, 35, 40, in a car just chugging down Route 66, you know. But there was no, that's that's the point. So when, and people um, at that in that era, they weren't traveled. They didn't do vacations. And then in right. the 60s is when, now you could get a car that would go 100 miles or 200 miles. 
So these little towns are popping up with gas stations and motor courts. And, and what we learned, like in Seligman, like you brought up earlier, is trains would come from Kingman or wherever in California. And the stopping point was Seligman. And then trains would be coming from Texas and they'd stop. And the guys would get off and another crew would get on to continue the journey or, or go on. And there's a lot of places called the Harvey House that were yeah. along these and they were hotelers that had actually you could do food and do it was like kind of this whole like but they evolution. were elegant right they were somewhat elegant all the mm. women had white dresses on and they served the food but they were serving the train people typically yeah. called the harvey house okay and you still see monument signs i know we're a wealth of knowledge well it's Let's so funny because what you guys are saying i don't really know and then we were talking about emma jean's hollenberger yeah, you know right. and you guys didn't know that it's like there's obviously just so much to see well, then let's do a trip together so, like, i love it in barstow there's a harvey house but the house isn't there anymore the plaque's there and there's something else on the property but in arizona at the grand canyon on the south rim you can go into a that has a bunch of artifacts and pictures and history and i think maybe that was a harvey house on the rim uh could have been hotel I, we, i'm not sure yeah also you guys said truck driver and i just i have such an appreciation for truck drivers. Well, you have that. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, you know. I actually come from a family of truck drivers, but yeah. um, to do that trip, you know, I did it once and it was fun, and you know, but to have to do that all the time to drive cross country and only have access to the food at the gas station, right? You know, and showering there, and then that's just you know, like I never want to eat at a subway again. You know, <laughs> like oh my gosh, I just had this. You're passing so many of them, and I just had this. I already respected truck drivers. I actually had my um, my CDL permit, um, but I don't know. I was just like, man, I ha I feel like it's a very underappreciated yeah, group of sure. people, and like they and make America them. go round. So yeah. shout out to the truck drivers out there. And a CDL yeah. is a commercial driver's license, right? Yes. Yeah, for so those that are trucks. for the internet uh, people that don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, we try to do like when we did Route sixty six, or you know, we always try and find the mom and pop bar or restaurant. Yeah. You know, to get, we try as much as possible. Yeah. So we can get out there and get their vibe. For sure. You know. Um, well, I I love truck drivers too, but sometimes I don't like them because they don't, don't get out of my way fast enough. Like, <laughs> get out of the way. <laughs> and they're like, we're bigger than you. Right. We're going to do yeah. what we want. We can go wherever we want. Oh, we also love, I love doing the. Oh, right. yeah. And, and, yeah. Uh, yes. You're like over there trying to make eye contact, but obviously they can't see your face and then doing it and they honk and then I smile so big and give them the woohoo. Now, if you're out in the country and you see a train and you can do the same thing. Yeah, we've done it. And they oh, will do the same. I did not know that. As long as they're not coming to a crossing, they will do it. Get your arm up high enough and start cranking it and they'll yeah. do it. Roll it. Okay. But the thing that is really great about travel is you go on these two lanes and there's rivers on the side, which is a mode of transportation. There's a train track over here and there's trains and there's trucks going. And so it's like trains and trucks. And the cool thing is, is um, what was the cool thing? <laughs> well, the cool thing is we've got some people that are giving us a little bit more accurate information. More than uh, us. Route 66 started in Chicago in 1926. I'm just and telling then you. Route 66 ran from Chicago, Illinois, before terminating in Santa Monica and Los Angeles County, California, covering a total of 2,440 miles. You're looking miles. at Wikipedia. Wait someone someone copied and pasted on. that or has an amazing memory. Just kidding. That's Mark Lawless. We actually saw him. <laughs> oh, in I know Mark. Yep. Um, and Lawrence says Harvey houses were rail relate, railroad related for customers to get coming to eat so yeah. like we're not so far off our game we're not we're kind of full of shit but we're really not, is, yeah. right? like it's believable yeah yeah we were uh lucky enough uh we had some articles go out before we went for the trip and so uh like route 66 news posted something about us and so the president of the oklahoma association of route 66 reached out reese martin and he uh, met us up for dinner oh, nice. and was telling us a lot of the history, especially about like specifically Oklahoma. And um, also that had more of a point 
I don't know, he was, yeah, kind of telling us that maybe what you read on Wikipedia isn't necessarily like exactly right. Like, I think it's he kind of what me, was established maybe at one point, but it might not be the most. Yeah, yeah. like, but they have like the DL, you know, like mm -hmm. maybe like the not official or whatever. And you know, when you're traveling, you want to talk to people and meet people. We spend time like on our documentary stuff where we'll actually sit down and get the chain of commerce, call people, this and that. Once they're like, well, what do you do? Who are you? YouTube, you know, YouTube chat. But then we send them a link. And they see what they do. And usually it's like the call goes right back. And it's like, all right, we dig it. What do you yeah. want to do? You know, once I went to Disneyland and oh, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> so we've all done it now. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Well, you know, and Route 66 was. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes you got that train of thought and all of a sudden it just goes. <laughs> I don't know. Was it about cars or like it'd be oh, oh. He's just oh, okay. He's, he's making fun of me. <laughs> and you. <laughs> okay, fair the, enough. The two of you. Because <laughs> well, we're so smart, we have so much in our brains. That that is, is, that of is course. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> I would not differ, beg to differ on that comment. If we like when we, I feel like again, I hope this show gets picked up and we get to do it again. Um, but yeah, we would have definitely reached out to more people and kind of set more stuff up. But again, it's just, you know, a couple of us and we didn't really know, but now that the groundwork has been laid, um, yeah. Like the ch calling the chamber of commerce, like brilliant. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to, they, people want, especially Why are small you giving towns, our secrets away? Especially <laughs> small towns. They want to, they want to get people to come to them. So, so they, you what, know, you, yeah. what you find is an advocate for you. Right. And yeah. so they introduce you, whether it's the chamber or historical society or what have you, they end up, end up introducing you to these prominent people in town, the historians. What was the guy in Deadwood, the, the theater guy? Buddy? Um, was it, I, oh, yeah. <laughs> this guy. Oh, the a, dude on the stage. Yeah. He, yeah. A character. He, and he plays a character. They do the shootouts and they do it. They have a play and but had so much knowledge about the town and was such a character in general little hat and just sitting and he told us the whole and it was just it was wonderful we were in oatman and big mike's there and has been there for a long silver time mike. silver mike just and they just lay out in front of you this all this information and you're just going wow that's really cool to know and what's really cool is we go back through these towns and we stop to have a drink or eat or whatever and we're hanging out and they come up to us and go Hey, glad you guys are back here. And they remember. Yeah. Because they were in the video. But if you get a chance, look at our um, Sturgis Without the Rally. Okay. That series. Okay. We went with our wives. And we did a documentary through a few different places. But it was showing people what it was like without the rally. Mm -hmm. And just stuff along the way in history. That was really cool. Because we met some great people in Deadwood that we're going to be doing future work with. You know, with the Deadwood Historical Society and. That's good stuff. So where do people donate if they wanted to donate for? Yeah. So you can go to wagmorepets.org and just donate directly to them. Um, and if you need help finding wagmorepets.org, you can go to my YouTube channel, <laughs> uh, youtube.com backslash at Iron Pony Show, because uh, that is what we are calling our series. So the YouTube channel is the Iron Pony Show? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a working title because apparently it's like hard to find. And I don't know. Originally, it was just, hey, it's Cody. And then I was like, I don't know. Maybe it'll be something different. And then I talked to somebody who's like, no, your branding is, hey, it's Cody. You should call it that. And I'm like, oh, OK. Oh. So <laughs> for now. Well, Iron Pony's cool. Um, hey, it's Cody's cool. Too. But, hey, it's Cody's cool. But we, we kind of believe that we're on Iron Horses as well. We're cowboys traveling across the country. And we... Oftentimes in the comms, we'll be talking about, man, can you imagine like we're down in Bisbee, Arizona, the, the Cowboys uh, used to travel across the border into Mexico and back and forth. And this is probably where they were coming through, right? Because Bisbee was a little town, had a watering hole for the horses and the, the, the stores and things that were needed, saloon. Have you been to Bisbee? But no. Oh, oh, you have God. to go. It's just outside of Tombstone. As this an actress, you would love it because it's very eclectic. We've been there stuck in this little uh, 10 or 12 yeah, times, it's but uh -huh. it's it's a mining town stuck in this hill, and below it are all these caverns and caves and tunnels. That, but it's the got this. Town. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Bisbee, Arizona. Okay. There's Jerome, Arizona, which is another supposedly haunted 
town. Yeah. Tombstone is next to Bisbee. Okay. So you can make a nice little trek out of it. Okay. And even in the movie Tombstone, Sheriff sure, Behan said he gets out of the coach. He said, I just got back from Bisbee, you know, because it's pretty cool. Mm. Yeah, we stayed in Flagstaff. Uh, that was our like second night. And my old college professor lives there now. Yeah. And so we stayed with him and got to reminisce about the college years. And it was cool because he got we got to talk on camera about it. And part of the show is like, you know, getting to know Route 66 across America and small business owners and people we meet, but it's also getting to know me. And so it was really cool to right. talk to him. But yeah, he has um, his like, his sister has a taco truck in Jerome. So we're like, oh, we'll come back and we'll do a you whole episode go, with the right. taco truck. Yeah. And yeah. So we, our Harleys are time machines. Because when you're on them, you usually go back in time. Yeah. I dig that. So back to Jerome, they say it's truly haunted because they say, Whoever Barney Dinsmore, whoever I didn't out see there, ghost when I was there, they say that some of the the bones of people have been crushed and are in the cement. Oh. And we stayed in an old hospital asylum up on the hill. Oh, that is that's a lot. <laughs> it was but a, nothing. I mean, although in the morning I woke up and I was turned around a little bit, <laughs> and I like, something I like that, no on the pillow. Someone was tickling my feet. On, I was alone. <laughs> oh my <laughs> Wait, okay. Question. Do you guys, yeah. does everyone, do you guys sleep in the same bed? Yes, yes. All, all three of us. Uh, three separate see, rooms. From a business standpoint, three, three so much rooms. Rooms. we got to save money. We're all in the same bed. And, and we get doubles. You know, it's one like double. We're, we're together all day. We work out and we just figure, hey, we got a place to chill. So we've always kind of separate in different rooms. Okay. We were balling on a budget. So the three of us slept in the same room. And then there were places where I wanted a specific room. Like there was an Elvis Presley room and then there was um, right. a Buffalo Bill room. Well, that's, there's like one king bed in there. And I was like, you guys might not, we can all just sleep together. <laughs> I was in the middle, me and Chopper. Mm -hmm. It worked out though. I think you're so tired that you're just like, yeah. hit the head. well, for us, like we were saying earlier, just uh, off camera, like when we had so many cameras running, like we'd just hand him the the cards and then leave. So because he's up even later, he's yeah. doing, you know, downloading all this to get into files organized. And um, if we were in the same room, that'd probably be a little bit tougher for him. Yeah, yeah. So really we're all that. we're all in separate rooms, and then like in the middle of the, like you know midnight, one in the morning, I'll sneak down to the tavern, and as I walk in the door. They're in there. Like, what are you guys doing here? <laughs> so on the other gonna... side of that, there oh, have gosh. been a couple of trips where we've been either with a big, bigger group or in an area where hotels are more, way more expensive than Airbnbs. Mm. And with a bigger group, if we're like you know, like staying in a staying in a house all together, you get to cook dinner together, hang out in the backyard, have drinks, relax, have a good time, and that's just kind of all part of the camaraderie of the open road so in sturgis we must have a house so we can hang out together yeah that's the only way to go but one time we've never really been skunked but we're on this one trip we're in hanksville utah where we always got a room there's three hotels or motels couldn't little. get a room and it's dark out it's after dinner we're like holy shit Ooh. now we got to ride to uh tory and as we're riding it's pitch black we're all like beeping our horns just in case anything runs across you know and all of a sudden, we're looking up. We start talking to each other. We're like, you guys see the sky right now? So we ended up pulling over because we do whatever we works on the trip, whatever fate leads it. Pulled off the side of the, side of the road. We're all laying on the ground for about a half hour just watching the stars and the satellites. Oh Not us. realizing we're on a pullout that someone could just come in and <laughs> wrap on the top of us. We were in the middle of nowhere. But then we ended up in uh, covered wagons. In, in Torrey. Torrey, Utah, that was so awesome. Josh had never wow. seen satellites going across the sky before. You know what's funny? I was the other night I said that to someone. I said, yeah. I've never seen that before. So I might have been lying that time too. <laughs> you because got mad and said, I have seen it before. I've seen satellites recently. Me. Seen. Okay. Maybe I have oh, then. I don't know. Not out here. I've seen them here too. But yes, you need dark. You need the pollution. Yeah. And you can just see the out. Yeah, you forget how you can't see stars here until you go somewhere like that. And you're like, whoa, there are stars. Milky so Way. Though. Our whole thing yeah. on a journey when we're planning a trip, we always have night one where we're going. Mm -hmm. After that, it's game on. Yeah. And then it's finding things. And we, we've we had 10 guys every year to go to Sturgis. We always find 10 rooms. Wow. You know. Yeah. Or some of the guys share, but. 
But we're not staying at, you know, the Ritz Carlton either. Yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah. Right. We've been called rubs before. You know what that is? No. Rich urban bikers. Because we wow. don't lay in the dirt and never change our underwear. Oh, okay. That was like the and thing. And we don't care if people do that. If that's your thing, yeah. that's cool. We, yeah. like we don't to, care. We go, yeah, best Western, whatever. We don't call you that guy. Yeah. <laughs> you call us a rub. What like, do you mean, you people? So, because, you know, we've had plenty of videos with us fine dining. You mean you people? And sharing a, showing a steak and a glass of wine. But. We're, we're, we're working here. Yeah. We're working here. We ended up at, I uh, we hadn't booked Chicago. I actually thought a lot more of my friends were going to offer us places to stay along the way. And it's like, it didn't happen. Didn't oh, yeah, happen we're busy that us. day. So. <laughs> <laughs> so Chicago, we kind of were booking something last minute and um, I was using points on a credit card. So it was like, it didn't matter which room you pick. So I was like, oh, let's go with the fanciest one if it right. doesn't matter. And I want to spoil my boys a little bit. And so we ended up at the Thompson in the, I guess it's called the Viagra district because that's where all the like sugar babies go to find a sugar daddy or something. <laughs> well, we pull up dirty. Like this is our longest day, like on the motorcycles. And we've got Dave in the with the truck and trailer, which is so big. And navigating chicago was like worse than navigating la which i didn't know and um yeah, yeah we just walk in and i was like oh we don't belong here yeah. <laughs> we do not belong which that's funny. funny we had that on the way back from sturgis we walked in we thought we had rooms and uh it was the thousand mile day we pulled into oh vegas God. at 12 o'clock and went into the hotel and just lance's son and i and they just looked at us and they're like we don't have any rooms no, road. well like, the first one they they legit that's, didn't have rooms. No, that's not true. Oh, really? They had rooms. They had rooms. Oh, because we went to the win, but but at the win, at um, first they said no. So so right? then he calls over to the win, which because we knew that they definitely had rooms. Yeah. So we we walk in there and they're like, we don't have any rooms. Ten of us with helmets. And yeah, I, yeah. So then it's like these guys come walking out, and I'm walking in. We all have gear. I'm like, what's going on? Oh, they don't have rooms and. Okay, so then I get on with American Express because I we've got some preferred status, just all the stuff that we Rubs. run through the <laughs> yeah. no, we run through the store. Like so he gets on the phone and calls the, the guy the reservation again, and they're like, Yeah, we have plenty of rooms. So he's on the we're sitting there, and I'm like, So the manager goes, wait a minute. And he said, Hey, we're on the phone with your reservation guy. Go in the back. Yeah. So they came out and they apologized and we ended up getting the rooms for a very reasonable price. We got five hundred dollar so. rooms for like two hundred bucks. And when I walked into the room on in the wind, like way up there, push the button and the drapes <laughs> open and the bed's like giant. He like, hasn't seen that. Before. I can't figure out how to turn the TV off. I'm like, how do you turn this off? Oh, hit the iPad. It's like that was the oh, best. Yeah three hours of sleep I've but ever gotten in my life. It was well deserved after a thousand miles. We got pressure. the players club rooms oh yeah because they're like hey we save rooms what it? hotel in vegas doesn't have a room at night for sure that is so made <laughs> tell up. me you you are like it you're at the table you're rolling it's like oh i better go to sleep i've dropped 10 grand here 20 grand you don't have a room well i think when i was standing there really tired with bloodshot eyes big white beard and i was like you don't have a room <laughs> what are you talking about man yeah the culture thing didn't work so well did it? <laughs> but yeah. the next morning clearly we were not win people because yeah. we're in biker gear and for like, sure. and but we were cleaned up nice but had a good we're in breakfast. Levi's and t-shirts <laughs> yeah you know? it doesn't help that I'm always walking around with a dog in my arm too people are just like True. oh my, we've got motorcycle helmets and dogs and right. these ruffians like well, it's been a really good time. Hopefully, hopefully you've enjoyed it as yeah. well. We really appreciate you guys coming up, and hopefully, you'll join us on the fourth for our grand opening. Heck yeah, eleven to or twelve to four tacos and chili. Count me in. No beer, and giveaways. Byob. Byob. Exactly. That's we'll say no. Yeah, byob. Or not. Just we're trying to figure that happens. out. Yeah, whatever. We happens. don't want the liability. I'm getting these numbers mixed up here. There we go. <laughs> Are you on camera now? Or no, not? I was putting it on me, and then I'm we'll putting put on it on Cody. You. Okay, what's up? We got a question. Who are we sponsored by for this drop? This episode is brought to you by Eagle Rider Motorcycle Rentals and Tours. If you go to TulaneLife.com, you click on the little tab that says Eagle Rider, you can book a trip, you can save some money. Pretty I'll simple. say it clear. You can book a trip, and you can save some money. You can have a good time. And while you're on the website, we've got blogs with travel info, eat stays, routes. We've got parts. 
We've got T-shirts. We've got hats. Maybe even some socks. We've got some gloves. That's all. Back to you. Well, back to you one second. <laughs> Whoa. So in, in the link in this, you've got all of Cody's links, right? Yeah. So in if the they need to go find some. Yep. To the YouTube. And if you're watching on Spotify, listening on Spotify, I mean, or Apple Music or Amazon or any of that stuff, just check out the links below. You can access all Cody's stuff, all our stuff, Wagmore Pets, Iron Pony Show, YouTube, Tulane Life, you know. Think and about it, it, you donate and the dogs wag more. Hey. <laughs> and yeah. and uh, if you haven't donated and you're listening to this later on our Spotify, all of our different streaming Make a donation. We'd appreciate that. Yeah. I also want to shout out, um, you guys helped uh, coordinate Bell sending us a helmet. So At the end of the ride, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, shipped it to Illinois. So that was awesome. Um, turns out nobody wears helmets in Illinois. <laughs> so we actually brought it back with us. And hopefully in the future, I'd actually love to like give it away with you guys. Yeah. So bring it to the, the, the opening and they, you, you can do that. We'll give it away. Donate it. But they have to get uh, donations to Wagmore. Yeah, I love that. And then they can win the helmet. If you're available and you want to come back, we'll bring the helmet. We'll yeah, do it here. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But thank you so much to Bell because that was freaking awesome. And they actually, at the Harley Davidson over there, they uh, opened it up to check it out. And everyone was like, this is a sick helmet. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's a pretty sick helmet. I can't imagine riding without a helmet. But anyway. No, me neither. No, thanks. Yeah. So where do they find your stuff? You can find me everywhere at Hey, it's code E. C O D W E. Y double E. Big Dick Swagger. <laughs> <laughs> one more time. Yo. Well, right. we appreciate it. And so three, two, one, see you down there, or you're gonna throw your finger at the camera. So we're gonna say see you down the road after one. Oh, right? okay. Three, three two, two, one, see, see you down, down the road. road. <laughs> Thank you for everyone tuning in again. Don't forget to check out twolanelife.com. And just one more time for good measure, we will. See you down the road.